The plot, so to speak, of global feminism in 2022 has been watching things get ever more hopeful in Iran and ever more hopeless in Afghanistan. Though they started late in the year, the relentless protests against Iran's morality police do seem to be bearing fruit, though news blackouts and official misinformation is making it really hard to pin down the full extent of it. But whatever rights women stand to gain in Iran, they're dwarfed by the rights women have lost in Afghanistan. And their storyline got even worse last week when the Taliban barred women from attending university. Now, as you'll know if you're a regular listener, they already barred girls from attending middle and high schools, so we all saw this coming, despite the repeated reassurances of the Taliban that they weren't going to do this shit. But they did. They barred women from working at universities and a few days later from working for non-governmental organizations with the excuse that there were too many female employees at those things that didn't wear proper hijabs. In the words of university lecturer and Afghan activist Homira Quadreri, quote, Afghanistan is not a country for women, but instead a cage for women, end quote. Of course, all of this shit is in direct contradiction to what they promised to do when the U.S. withdrew from the nation. But it's the fucking Taliban, not really known for their trustworthiness. Still, the recent moves are disturbingly regressive and not just from the perspective of a liberal feminist in America. Majority Muslim nations like Turkey and Saudi Arabia have condemned these moves as well. And when Saudi Arabia is like, y'all are being sexist, you know you've got a serious fucking problem. But lest I end the year on bad news, I do want to return really quick to the good old U.S. of A. and highlight a small success in Indiana, of all places. So, as you recall, when the SCOTUS chucked row to the curb like yesterday's Christmas tree, several Jewish groups sued their states to protect access to abortion, arguing that restricting abortion was a religious imperative and their religion didn't have that imperative. Now, a lot of people dismiss these suits by pointing out that they're not legally sound. But, as the SCOTUS proved with Dobbs, legally sound no longer matters in terms of abortion arguments. And apparently Heather Welch agrees with me. Which matters, because she's a county superior judge in Indiana, and her opinion was enough to block the state's new anti-abortion law from going into effect. Now, to be clear, all she's done is delayed the thing for a month. She issued a temporary injunction that'll only last until Indiana's Supreme Court hears this case next month. And... It's Indiana Supreme Court, so we kind of know how this is going to go. But the decision itself is brilliant. First of all, the plaintiffs used the RIFRA law that was signed by none other than Mike fucking Pence as the basis for their suit. And in her opinion, Welch points out that the question of when life begins is purely theological and not scientific. Then adds that even if you could argue that it is scientific, that doesn't matter because as Sam Alito insisted in the Hobby Lobby decision, what science says is irrelevant if religious people sincerely believe otherwise. So sure, Indiana's high court will overrule her and this law will eventually go into effect. But in the meantime, the draconian law languishes a little longer. And with a little luck, Indiana's high court has to tie themselves into such legal knots to justify their action that they strangle themselves. And now that I've earned a stern email from Andrew, I suppose my work here is done. So I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. <laughs> 